What's going on? So, I haven't made a video in forever, because I really don't have to make a video on. But I want to make a video, because I like making videos. Plus, I just put the most powerful desktop CPU in my computer that there is right now, and I want to see how quick it edits video. <laughs> 5950X, literally the most powerful desktop CPU you can get right now, but I don't even make a video on it. So I'm like trying to think of something, trying to think of something. I have a live stream coming up, definitely gonna do that soon. That got kind of postponed from a couple weeks ago, but I thought, hmm, maybe we can do a uh, unboxing. I'm actually kind of curious as to what's in the box with the AF60LRs. I thought I heard somebody mention something about a tool, like an aiming tool or something. So I don't know. It'd be kind of neat if it came with one of those. It would kind of make sense too, because especially being the long range one, um, aiming 60 gigahertz is pretty hard from what I understand because the beam is like a little pencil. So if it came with an aiming tool, that would be awesome and I wouldn't really be surprised. <laughs> but let's find out. to be a goodness. Mm -hmm. All right, so what's in the box? Let's see. Cardboard, that's cool. They even give you like plastic straps so you can pull them out. That's kind of convenient, right? And there's two of them in here. We're gonna just leave that one because they're both the same, I'm sure. Got the same little plastic plastic straps. Oh, it even has a pull tab. You don't even have to use a knife. Look at that. How nice is that? Pop that off there. Open this bad boy up. Ooh, egg carton. Oh. Damn. Okay, I put the first one together without realizing that the camera was off. So, yeah. <laughs> so we'll toss this one together real quick. Um, wanted to put them both together anyway because I want to get them up and running and play with them and stuff. Show you guys what the interface looks like and all that. Fuck off, foam. Foam. So you got the, the dish part, which is nice. Nice and light too, which is good. Doesn't weigh a ton. This is the feed horn. And on this thing you have um, your power, ethernet, 60 gig, GPS. All your little lights are on there so you can see if the thing's doing anything at a glance. Your uh, ethernet port goes in here, or your ethernet cable rather. And I'll show you in a second something interesting I noticed about that. The design of this thing is kind of cool. They, they did some kind of neat stuff with it. This thing, I don't know what the hell this is. It looks like a little remote control kind of. I don't I don't really know what it is. Cable, gotta have it. The power injector in this is a UPoE AT. So it is uh, 48 volts at 0.65 amps, so 31.2 watts. So not the most power hungry thing in the world, but uh, Needs a little bit of juice, not too bad. Uh, mounting bracket, and then, come on. It actually comes with wrenches, so you can adjust stuff. The mount itself, and then your two little arms. Whoa. And some nuts. So the way this works is this goes, I'm gonna grab my little B cam again. So this part goes in here. I mean, it's almost like Legos, like they only go together. Well, they're keyed, put it that way. They only go together one damn way. And it's relatively self-explanatory. It's hard to do with one hand though, that's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah, and then once you get it in there, there's a screw that you use to uh, tighten it down so it doesn't go anywhere. But what I noticed when I was putting this, the other one together, the ethernet goes through there, right? Well, there's a hole 
down here. You're actually supposed to run it through the feed horn, which is kind of interesting. Instead of making the plug down here or something and just running cable up through there, they leave it open so you can run the ethernet itself through there. It's kind of a little different, but yeah, once you get that on there, you just tighten it down with the little thumb screw and Bob's your auntie. Now for these, these are the ones that go on the side. They are very simple. You just snap it on here like this. And then on the side, like that. There you go. Easy peasy. Lemon motherfucking squeezy. Like that. Like that. There you go. Now for the mount, this is actually kind of cool. Let me grab my little B cam again and I'll show you. There's like little ridges or locks or whatever in here on the top and the bottom. And there's little teeth on here, top and bottom. So which way do I want this though? I guess it really doesn't matter. I, I think it can probably go either way, technically. Uh, I did just notice an arrow. There's an arrow on there, so we're going to try it like that. We're going to put the arrow, come on, like that, and then turn it. Yep, like that. So you have, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a little triangle, a little triangle. So you line the triangles up and then you rotate it until it's triangle and a square. Though there is a triangle down here too, so it can actually go either way by the looks of it. Yeah, because there's another square over there. So yeah, this can be on this side or on this side if you want. Either way. But here's what your wrenches are for to adjust stuff by the looks of it. Yeah. And there's Allen heads everywhere. Yep. So there you go. Now I need to find out what the hell this is for. I don't know what this is. Um, it actually has some info on the lid of the box. There's like a little outline. I don't know if you can see it very well, but I don't see where this comes into play. <laughs> Time to RTFD. I was just looking through the quick start guide and it doesn't mention this thing at all. So I went through a, another download from Ubiquity. It had like another spec sheet or data sheet or whatever and it shows this thing i think this is the aiming tool because it looks like they're saying to click it in here like that and then i think you're supposed to look through the hole uh not what i had in mind for an aiming tool but i mean hey if it works it works right <laughs> interesting all right i got them hooked up yeah one of them's on a shovel but you know it's only for a second uh, nothing's plugged in yet for all you that think 60 gig will like kill you or something nothing's plugged in don't worry got everything just mounted temporarily um by the way these nuts suck they screw them all the way down onto the bolt and that bracket isn't on there so have fun with those anyway that's one here's the other on an old light stand that I had looking all semi-decent and whatnot it's also not plugged in yet so don't worry all you people that love to worry it's not hooked up yet yeah, yeah, the same thing so the way that this is supposed to work if I'm not mistaken is you look through the hole and you try to aim it towards the other radio so I don't know what it looks like through that thing. I haven't looked yet, but I'm going to try to get a shot for you guys so you can see. For this aiming thing, I wanted to kind of show you what it looked like through it. Come on. There we go. And you can see it's hard to get it aimed up with the, <laughs> the image stabilization on the camera. is like trying to fix it. <laughs> But you can see the, uh, whatever you look at, you can see through it. It's kind of a interesting 
way to do it. I didn't think it'd have like a clipped in hardware thing, but uh, I think it'd work. Especially if you could see the radio that you're aiming at. If you can't see it and you're just kind of aiming in a general direction, uh, yeah. But it's definitely better than nothing. It's kind of a clever solution. Let's see, can we see the leaf? Where's the leaf? Where's the leaf? It may not even focus. I don't know. Leaf. That's a door handle. <laughs> Come on, OIS. Quit fighting me. Eh, screw it. Zero emission, bitch. <laughs> but that's the aiming tool. Um, definitely not what I expected, but hey, if it works, it works, right? And uh, one more time. Um, fuck these. Right in the goat ass. And yes, I know this is backwards, but it has to clamp onto something small so it'll get flipped around. But when you get these things, the nut is all the way down here. So you have to undo the nut all the way, and there's like corrosion or goo or something in there that you can't spin it, so you have to sit there with a wrench the whole fucking way. I think what I'm gonna do is turn this one on and uh, plug into it and get it set up, then unplug it. And then I'm gonna go over to that one and do the same. And then I'll plug that one in, come over here and plug this one in, and then go over there somewhere. So, you know, people love to say that the 60 gig will, I don't know, do something. <laughs> eh, I don't know. I don't really believe it, but hey, let's not find out, okay? All right. So I configured the other one already. Um, I just plugged this one in. So this isn't like a full setup, but it gives you an idea of how these work. Um, when you first connect to them, you got to select your country. English is fine. I hate how it's like, I agree to the terms of service because otherwise I can't use the damn thing. Uh, we'll just set whatever for now. Uh, and that'll work. Whatever, just temporary. And it'll say, okie dokie. Now that one, it popped up a thing saying I needed a um, software update, firmware update, whatever. Which was weird because I guess it was using my laptop as a bridge. I don't know, it, it's not connected to the internet anywhere. I guess it was doing it through the laptop, which is kind of cool because I don't think other radios will do that. I've never had that happen before. Eh. This one looks like it's okay. Maybe, maybe, oh, there it goes. So we're gonna let this one update. Because the laptop's still connected to Wi-Fi. These aren't, there's nothing else plugged into these. If, if I unplug it from the laptop, it'll still be on, but it doesn't have connection to anything. So the only thing I can think of is it's going through the laptop, which is kind of slick. So we'll let this do its thing, stand by. Oh yeah, how do you like the new laptop? Asus Zephyrus G14. Look at all these CPU cores. Oh, it's so good. All the CPU cores. Uh, AMD Ryzen 9 5900HS. And it has an RTX 3060 built into it. In a little itty bitty tiny little 14 inch laptop. This thing is so good. All right, that's done. It's not exactly quick but it, it's not too bad. So that should be all done and ready to roll. Now I need to go in here and do wireless. This one needs to be the master. And I change this to that. Save changes. And I'm gonna go turn that one on and they should connect. So one second. Okay, so that one's on, this one's on. They should connect. They have to just boot up and talk to each other and, you know, do, do radio things. The UI on this one's nice. It's more white and gray with like hints of blue instead of the more just straight up blue ones like the other radios. There we go. Total capacity, 1,751 megs. <laughs> Granted, it's shooting all of 50 feet, but, you know. 
<laughs> your link potential's creeping. Creeping. So yeah, they, they work just like other radios. Come to find out, they do have Bluetooth, so you don't have to plug into them like I did. I didn't know they did, but I could... <laughs> I was unboxing them and I'm thinking to myself, these things have to have Bluetooth. But they don't, I don't remember saying it, any, seeing it anywhere. It has UNMS on the box, which that's a different kind of thing. Now it's UISP, but I don't know. Either way, they do have um, management radios. Let's hop into one and see what it looks like. Um, I would imagine it's probably about the same as all the others, but let's find out. Holy notifications, Batman. Jeez. So, which one is which? 7B is over there. 8.1 is the one right here. Like that. Plug in. Plonk. So, yeah, that works just like all the others, as to be expected. Yeah, it looks the same. Let's see, can you do any other settings in here? Wave AI? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Advanced is just country code. Don't care. Bridge. What other options are there? Yeah, these only work as bridge. Management IP. The management IP thing's kind of goofy. I I've had lots of issues with that because if you hook up two radios and they both keep their management IP and they don't change for whatever reason, you good luck. It's a pain in the ass trying to get into them to uh, like manage them. And you have to get in them to change the IP. So yeah, that's, I got to figure out a more elegant solution for that soon. Cause, ugh. but yeah, there we go. We got a total of, let's see, capacity. 1.75 gigs symmetrical. Again, it's a probably 50 feet shot. So <laughs> at, I, I'm going to be running them at four miles. I think something like that. Maybe, maybe a little further. I don't remember. It should still be really, really good. If I can get eight or 900 megs, I'd be stoked because the fiber should be done at the tower soon. That should be freaking. actually, it should be done now, actually. We can't use it until the first because we have to wait for things and stuff. So should have gig fiber at the, the far end tower that I connect to. And then I'm gonna put these up on that tower and my tower and I'm going to leave the five gigs up and yeah, that's what I'm referring to as phase two. Phase one was getting the payment pro the payment uh, portal all set up and the, the billing system and all that crap. That's all done now, working mostly fine. So this is part two and uh, should be soon. <laughs>